Hey guys, today we're going to talk about fuses and what types of fuses you should be using for a lithium battery bank. I see way too many people using the wrong types of fuses, the wrong size fuses, and just fuses that aren't designed for the application they're working with. And the reason why this is important is because if you're using a fuse not designed for a specific application, uh, you can get arcs that form across these two terminals in the fuse in the event of a short circuit and that will burn extremely hot, it will cause fire, it will not extinguish itself. The fuse is not guaranteed to break that arc that forms. So I'm going to go over a few things you need to look for when you're selecting a fuse for your battery bank. Before we can begin looking at the data sheets of various fuses, we need to first discuss what the short circuit current of a lithium battery is. So I have here four very common batteries. The first three are probably the most common I've seen in Dell laptop battery packs. And then this last one came from a Ryobi drill battery pack. So it's, we know this is going to be a high discharge, uh, low capacity battery. A common misconception I see constantly repeated is that is because these are low drain cells, they can only push a few amps of current. Uh, that is not true. Those ratings that you see on a spec sheet that say, you know, I'm just going to guess, I don't know what they are offhand, but let's say, let's say this is rated for 2 amps continuous and 5 amps max. That's not to say it can't push more than 5 amps, that's just saying that's the most you can pull from it uh, safely without causing the battery to get too hot. So to further explain this point, uh, what I'm going to do is short out each one of these cells using this amp meter and show you just how much amps can be pushed from one of these cells under a short circuit condition. So we'll start with the Samsung ICR 18650-28A first. And as you saw, that one was around 40-ish amps. Next we have a Panasonic CGR18650E. Uh, that was around 40-ish amps as well, but it also did decrease very rapidly. And then this is a Samsung ICR18650-26D. Uh, this pink Samsung is probably the most common I see in Dell batteries. I have tens of thousands of these cells. So you'll see that one held around 40 to 45 as well before it started to drop off quickly. And then this is an LG cell from a Ryobi power tool battery. And that actually overloaded the clamp meter, so we don't know what the short circuit discharge of this cell was. Um, and it's very hot just from that second that I shorted it. And this clamp meter is rated for 600 amps. Um, I doubt this pushed more than 600 amps. It was probably just some inrush that overloaded it. Uh, but yeah, we won't be able to test this particular cell. So the most common type battery pack I see people building are 80 cells in parallel. So if we assume 35 conservatively we're going to say 35 amps as you, as you saw it went to 40 and even above 40 but we're going to say conservatively 35 amps per cell 80 cells at 35 amps per cell is 2800 amps so that means if you short circuit an ADP battery pack you're going to see at least 2800 amps I say at least because it's probably going to be more and then some people are building larger packs I'm building 300p parallel packs so again, if we conservatively estimate 35 amps per cell under short circuit at 300 cells, that's 10,500 amps that would flow if a 300p battery pack were shorted out. So these numbers are the short circuit current of our battery. So we need to make sure that the fuses we're looking at are able to interrupt a short circuit current of 2,800 amps for ADP and 10,500 amps for a 300p. So keeping these numbers in mind that we calculated over here, let's look at some standard uh, fuses I see commonly used. Uh, these are your standard glass fuses. It's just a glass tube with a little skinny element that runs through it. Uh, these are commonly used in automotive or like uh, power supply type applications, low amperage AC applications as well. So I pulled down the data sheet from Busman. Uh, so the first thing I see here is that this fuse is rated for 32 volts. That would be fine if you're using a 7S battery bank because a 7S battery bank comes out at 29.4 volts full charge. Uh, so that still satisfies the 32 volt condition. However, there is no interrupt current rating for this fuse given. Uh, so this fuse is not an acceptable fuse for a lithium battery bank. 
So one of the next fuses I see people using commonly are these automotive blade style fuses. Uh, these are pretty much only used in automotive. I do see them in some inverters sometimes, but it's not too often. So again, here's the fuse spec sheet from Little Fuse. So there's two types given here. There's mini silver plated and mini tin plated. Both of them are rated for 32 volts DC. So again, that's perfectly fine for a 7S battery pack, which will have a maximum voltage of 29.4 volts. And these actually do give the interrupt current. So both of these are rated for 1000 amps. That means when a short circuit occurs, if less than 1000 amps flows through here, this is guaranteed to break it. If it's at 1001 amps or it's at 5000 amps, uh, this is not going to break that current. An arc is going to form and this is going to melt and could catch fire. So at 1000 amps, this is fine to use for a small battery pack if you've got like 10 cells in parallel or something like that and you've calculated out that the short circuit current of the cells you are using is below 1000 amps. Uh, but for an 80p battery pack and a 300p battery pack, this is not a good choice. So the next most common fuse I see, and this is probably by far the most incorrectly used fuse, are these ANL fuses. I don't even have an example of one of these, so I'm going to show you some on the computer. But basically these fuses, at least this Busman fuse that I printed out the spec sheet for, is rated for 80 volts DC or less. Uh, and it has an interrupt rating of 2,700 amps. I'm going to tell you the problems I see with these fuses, but, but setting those aside, this is still not an acceptable fuse, because if you've got an 80p battery pack, and we calculated with the cells we were using at 2,800 amps, the interrupt rating of this at 2,700 amps is still less than the short circuit current of that 80p battery pack. So this is still not a good choice, even though the voltage specification is there for 14S, the first problem I see is that people pull up AliExpress and they pick, they just search for ANL fuse and they pick the absolute cheapest junk they could find. Here's an example listing that came up on AliExpress when I searched for ANL fuses. If you think you can get a 300 amp, a 400 amp, or similar fuse for 89 cents, you're out of your mind. Um, that should be a clear red flag that this is not a fuse you want to use. A lot of reports I'm seeing is that these companies are actually putting the same element in every fuse and just changing the label on it. Uh, and that is not a proper way to do this. Um, I've seen a lot of people mention these fuses melting, the terminals melting, the wire melting, uh, and it almost catching fire even at half the amperage of the rating before the fuse actually blows. So if you plan to use an ANL fuse, I would definitely look for a brand name like Busman. Uh, none of these AliExpress specials that have no brand name listed. Look for a brand name that's proven like Busman and make sure it has a UL or some other safety certification. This particular fuse is recognized by UL. That means it's been tested to meet certain safety certifications. This is still a good certification to look for in your fuses. So my favorite go-to place for fusing has been Blue Sea Systems. They have some high quality products, uh, most of which are rebranded. Uh, for example, on their website they have two fuse blocks. They have one for 35 to 300 amps and they have one for 35 to 750 amps. Unfortunately, both of these are rated for systems up to 32 volts DC, so they won't cover a 14S battery pack. And these fuse holders also meet UL90-V0 specifications, which is the safety standard for flammable plastics. And here's an example of the fuses you should be looking for. This is a Busman ANL325, that means it's a 325 amp fuse. This fuse is rated for 80 volts DC or 32 volts AC. So this would be a good choice for a 48 volt battery bank, provided you found an appropriately sized fuse holder for it. Um, and make sure you're buying a genuine fuse. So now we're on to the better choices for fuse selection for lithium batteries. Uh, these are standard 10 by 38 fuses. These particular fuses are made by Little Fuse. And you'll notice they're different than the previous fuses we've looked at. The tubes in these fuses are made with ceramic or some other material instead of the standard glass tubes. And these ceramic tubes are actually filled with silica or sand or some other like material that if an arc were to form between these two terminals, that sand would quench the arc or prevent it from forming in the first place. Uh, these fuses have a much higher interrupt current rating, and these are the types of fuses you want to look for for your lithium battery bank. So if we pull down the specification sheet from Little Fuse for these fuses, this is the KLKD series fuse. Uh, we see it's good for 600 volts AC or 600 volts DC. We see it has two interrupt current ratings given here. The first interrupt current is 10,000 amps, 
and that is the UL248-19 specification, which is for solar PV applications. The rating below it says 50,000 amps for the UL248-14 certification, which is low voltage systems. If you're just building a battery bank, you'll be, you can be assured that this fuse is good for 50,000 amps interrupt current or less. 50,000 amps satisfies both these conditions over here for the 80p battery pack and the 300p battery pack. The only reason why these fuses are not a good choice for a large battery bank is because the smaller style fuses are only available up into 30 amps. So you can get one tenth of an amp up to 30 amp fuses. If you're using a large battery bank with this many cells, chances are you're going to pull more than 30 amps from it. So this is my personal favorite for my main system fuse on my battery pack. This is a Class T fuse. This particular type is made by Busman. It is a JJN350, so it's a 350 amp fuse. It says current limiting, fast acting. Uh, UL, it's UL tested, 160 volts DC, and an interrupt current of 20,000 amps. This model fuse is the one I'm actually using out in my battery shed now. Um, I'll explain why this is broken shortly, but this is a JLN 225 amp by Little Fuse. So if we pull down the spec sheet for the Little Fuse fuse, we'll see the DC rating on this fuse is 125 amps because we're in the 70 to 1200 amp category, so it's good there. And the interrupt rating for the 35 to 1200 amp category is 20,000 amps. And we see here it is UL tested for 248-15 class T. And it's got a whole bunch of certifications listed here. This fuse satisfies all three of our requirements. It's got enough amps to power our inverter for the voltage. It's good for the 48 for the 14S voltage, which is around 52 or so volts nominal. And it's about 58 to 59 full charge. Um, it also satisfies the requirements for both an 80p or a 300p battery bank. So 10,500 amps of short circuit current is less than the 20,000 amps that this is rated for. Now something you want to keep in mind when we talk about these ratings as well is we are talking about the main system fuse that goes before the main battery cables that come off of your battery bank. We're not talking about little skinny 14 gauge wires like this. Uh, a cable like this, this is one aught cable, is going to be able to carry, you know, a substantial amount of current, 10,000, 20,000, whatever amps, under a short circuit condition. Another thing to mention is most people are putting this uh, type of fuse wire, this very thin wire, when they parallel their 18650 cells. And you may be asking, well, why isn't that good enough, you know, because all these fuses would blow before the main fuse blows. This fuse wire should never be your first line of defense in short circuit protection. You need to have a properly sized fuse as your first line of defense in short circuit protection. And it's also important to keep in mind that not everybody is using 18650 cells. Uh, there's people using big EV batteries like this Nissan LEAF Generation 1 battery pack. And I don't even know what the short circuit capacity of this battery would be, and I don't want to find out. So, one more fuse I do want to go over briefly are these knife style uh, NH00 or NH000 fuses. I really like these fuses, but I've come to the conclusion that they're mostly used in Germany or other European countries. I don't think they're used in the United States very much. I could, couldn't find any fuses of this form factor at all that had a UL listing, which was kind of interesting. 836, that's not this particular fuse, but that is one of the fuses that I am using, so that's the spec sheet I printed out. It is rated for up to 250 volts DC, and using DC it has an interrupt current of 25 amps. So there's one reason I'm talking about this, is I do strongly, strongly prefer the Class T style fuses as I've showed you. However, with some of the size systems people are building out, there's something else we need to keep in mind. Let's say you have two 80p battery packs wired in parallel. Well, now your short circuit current is up to 5,600 amps. And let's say you've got two 300p battery packs in parallel. Now your short circuit current is up to 21,000 amps. Now what do you do when your short circuit current exceeds the maximum current, the maximum interrupt rating of your class T fuse or other fuse you want to use? Well now you need to start putting fuses between your parallel strings. So I'll show you this in a bit, but what I'm doing out in my battery shed is I've got two 300p packs that come into two NH00 fuses and then they're joined on the output and then they go over to the class T fuse, which is my main system fuse. That way if a short circuit were to occur and this class T fuse can't interrupt the short circuit amps, uh, these two fuses will blow as well. 
This way, both strings are protected individually, and these are also protected if the short were to occur at the batteries, which comes before the class T fuse. Um, so again, the only disadvantage I've seen of these is they're not readily available in the United States, and they are not UL listed. So out here in the battery shed, you can see where both strings come up into this junction box. This is a fuse disconnect. There are three fuses in there, 125 amps a piece. Then they come up and they're combined on the output and there's one main cable that goes up out of the battery bank. And that cable comes down over here with a 4 aught cable to a 225 amp little fuse fuse. This is a class T fuse on a Blue Sea Systems holder. There's one on the positive side and I've got another over here on the negative side. So I mentioned earlier that I would explain why this 225 amp fuse is open. Uh, and that's because this is actually the second time I filmed this video. Because the first time I filmed it, I was too stupid to turn the microphone on and to film the entire video with the microphone off. So the purpose of opening this fuse was just to show you what was inside the sand material or silica that quenches the arc. So to open this fuse, I first used two pair of ice grips and tried twisting it, thinking I might be able to twist one of the ends off. Uh, as you see, that did not go very well. I then moved on to the hacksaw method and just sawed two slits in both sides of the fuse cap. And finally, after pulling at it for a bit, the thing popped open. Uh, and you can see sand spilled everywhere, or silica, whatever the material is. So here's the inside of the fuse. This is the sand or silica filling material. And here's the inside of both end caps. I'm not sure why there's so many tabs in there, but that must have something to do with the way the arc is quenched when one forms. So all these fuse types you see here, whether it be the NH00 style, the Class T, or the smaller 10x38, um, the ceramic fuses that are filled with sand or silica type material are referred to as HRC. It stands for High Rupture Current or High Rupture Capacity, which basically means it's capable of breaking a large amount of amps under a short circuit fault condition. So just to summarize here, we have the NH00 or NH000 fuse. These are HRC fuses. We have the automotive blade fuse and the automotive glass tube fuse. Neither of these are appropriate for solar or lithium battery applications. We have the 10 by 38 ceramic silica or sand filled fuse, and we have two class T ceramic sand or silica filled fuses. This class T fuse is definitely the best choice to use for lithium or high current battery banks. Um, I'll put a link to where you can buy these class T fuses and holders in the description below. As a general rule when you're shopping for fuses, if the deal looks too cheap, it's probably too good to be true. If the fuse looks too flimsy and plasticky, you should completely ignore it. It's probably the reason why it looks flimsy. Do look for brand names like Siemens or Little Fuse or Busman. Uh, don't buy off-brand fuses. Don't buy fuses that are missing a brand name completely, which means they're generic Chinese, probably fake. Um, and again, even if you're not in the U.S., look for the UL listing. That will guarantee it's been tested by at least one certifying authority. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments or maybe something I may have missed explaining this, please do leave those in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.